Have you ever learned one of life's lessons in a way that feels a little bit like you got hit by a Mack truck? Well, I had one of those moments recently and I wanna share with you today what the Broadway play Hamilton, of all things, taught me about homeschooling. Just in case you're like, what are you talking about? Hamilton is a Broadway play based on the life and biography of Alexander Hamilton. And it's about, you know, obviously he's a founding father. It's about the revolution and it's about the spirit of this country and freedom and democracy and fighting for what you believe in and all of those great messages. Recently, kind of the topic of American history came up in our home and my younger boys were both like spouting off all of these facts and information to me and talking to me about the founding fathers and and Hamilton, Alexander Hamilton, and they knew things that I knew I had not taught them. And I was kind of like, wait, what, why do you know that? And they were like, oh, we learned it in Hamilton. It's in the play, it's in the music. And then just a couple weeks later, a very similar thing happened with one of my older daughters as well, who will be going into high school, where she was coming to me and saying, hey mom, I'd like to learn more about US history and this particular time period in US history. I'm just really interested and I know I've learned about it before, but I don't feel like I really remember everything that I wanna remember. I'd like to learn more. And I kind of just had this moment where I sat there and I thought, well, Hamilton, way to go. Thank goodness that there was something valuable for them to learn within Hamilton. However, what that taught me and what that really moreover than taught me, it reminded me, is that how we learn is so strongly tied to our interests. This is why I have preached for some time now that I think it's kind of silly to try to force our younger kids, that kind of K through three grade, to sit through really like kind of dry history lessons and things like that because they're never going to retain that information. There's nothing sticky about it in their minds. And so in today's video, I want to share with you some ways that you can incorporate interest, that you can incorporate fun into your homeschool this year to ensure that your kids are not only checking the boxes and passing the quizzes and the tests and doing the things that they're supposed to be doing, but that they're retaining the information, they're tying it to something and making that information sticky so that it stays up here in their brain and it's not something that they just memorize long enough to pass a test and then move on. Focusing on things that our kids are interested in, taking topics that perhaps they need to learn are required topics and subjects, and making them fun and interesting and engaging and finding a way to kind of grab our children's interest and curiosity because not only will that keep their attention span longer for the information that you want, but it's gonna make that information sticky, as I call it. It's gonna make it stay in their mind. It's gonna give them something in their brain to anchor it to when they have some kind of a vested interest in learning it. How can we do this? Well, obviously, I think Hamilton is a great example of music and how storytelling and music is such a great way to convey something to kids and give them a narrative to hold on to. It's why so many of our stories, our childhood stories, are things that you remember for your whole life. You maybe heard that story for a few years as a kid, you know, Three Little Pigs or something like that. But you, you're not gonna become 90 years old and go, I don't really remember the premise of Three Little Pigs. What happened there again? It's really about making it into a story, history curriculums, things like that, that kind of get the child engaged in the narrative of what's happening is a great way to make it information that they will retain, that they will have more fun with. Our brains are drawn to stories. It's why when things don't make sense, we try to connect dots. We try to tell a story that isn't even there at times because our brains really like stories. My next recommendation is to incorporate more games or game schooling or programs and curriculums that make learning fun, that make it more engaging, something beyond just a worksheet. If we're really wanting to spark that interest, that creativity, this is a great time to incorporate some really fun 
curriculum and ways of getting the information across to kids. There are so many amazing things out there. I want to recommend to you today a program that I have recommended to y'all before. They are sponsoring today's video and that is the Night Zookeeper. This, you guys, is an amazing, amazing, fantastically fun language arts curriculum for kids ages 6 to 12. It's going to take the stress out of teaching language arts to your kids by making it genuinely fun and engaging for them. And of course, if kids are enjoying themselves, if they're engaged with the curriculum that they're doing, it's going to help ease some of that tension. If you find yourself kind of struggling with your child, they don't want to do school. They're kind of giving you a hard time. This is going to help ease some of that tension because it's making the learning process more enjoyable for your child. Not only are your kids going to be learning, you know, language arts, but it's incorporating a bunch of topics like reading, writing, spelling, grammar, vocabulary, all of that into one really fun curriculum program. The levels can be adjusted and it really just helps take the pressure off of you. Language arts can be one of the harder topics to teach. So in this program, there are thousands of interactive games and lessons and activities for your child to do. And that's going to cover you on a daily basis. So you don't have to stress out about pre-planning curriculums and lessons. It's all done for you. If you want to be more hands-on, you can hop into the dashboard, see what your child is doing. But if you want to be more hands-off, you want to know your kids are learning without you having to like be in the weeds of it, you can do that too. And what I think is the best part is that your child is going to get personalized like feedback on their writing lessons without you as the parent having to be the bad guy. It can feel very personal for kids when we critique their writing especially. And so this is a great way to kind of let somebody else do that, point out, you know, the mistakes and the things that need to be worked on in a gentle way. And it doesn't have to be you, which is Trust me, you are going to want to give Night Zookeeper a try, and you can do that at my link down below. You can try it free for seven days and get 50% off the annual membership if you decide you want to go ahead and purchase that. Don't sleep on this, okay? Check out this program. Give it a try. See what your kids think. I really, really think that you are going to love it, and so will they. My next recommendation for making learning more fun and more sticky for your children is to get hands-on as much as possible. Whether this is nature walks, nature journaling. My teenage daughters just came to me the other day and were like, mom, we miss when we used to go take our notebooks and our stuff to go do like nature notebooking because they, they're in high school, right? Like they're older, they have a whole bunch of stuff going on. And so they don't always do that kind of stuff with us. And they have really found that they miss it and want to be included in that and doing that kind of stuff more. It really is incredible how much more you learn by doing Getting hands on, again, really helps to make information stick and it gets you out of the humdrum, the mundane, all that kind of stuff. Now, I want to also add that I don't think you need to get crazy with this either. I think that, you know, the age of Pinterest and Instagram, uh, you know, homeschooling has become yet another thing that moms and women can often feel like they are not enough, they are not doing enough, that everybody else has all these amazing activities and crafts and all these things and these, you know, absolutely stunning nature notebooks that like look like they should be in a museum and you're like, listen, I'm lucky that my child did not squish a live snake into their notebook and that's it. Don't overthink it. Honestly, if it's too much for you, if you've got like a baby strapped on, you're trying to, you know, nurse and go on these walks and stuff, leave the backpack at home, leave the craft stuff at home. Just get outside, go for a walk, touch stuff, feel stuff, download the plant identifying app on your phone and go for a walk with your kids. Let them ask questions and you don't have to have the answers because Google does. It is a great way to be educating yourself and your kids and it's things that kids are going to remember okay they're going to be able to retain that information and it's going to make the homeschooling journey as a whole more pleasant and memorable there's a lot of things that homeschooling moms get really into read alouds and nature notebooking and craft time and poetry tea time and all these things that are really fun and can make homeschooling really engaging and fun for your kids and fun for you but not if it's stressful 
for you to make them happen. So figure out how, which one of those things, you don't have to do with them all, pick one thing like that that interests you and figure out how you could make it work. Like what do you need to distill it down to? What do you need to, for a lack of a better term, like dumb it down to its most simplistic form in order to be able to get it done? And then you can start adding the fluff and the fun and the painting and stuff. Like you can add all that stuff in later as you go. I think we often get stopped by feeling like it has to be perfect from the jump and then we just never do it at all. Incorporating life skills. I feel like these are skills that are just getting lost. And even in our own generation, think about, at least for me, how much more pragmatic and practical and capable and able my mother was than I am. And I've been on this kind of like self-education journey over the last few years to teach myself more skills, new skills, to learn new things. Uh, Part of that's just like my ADD brain and the way it works. But the other part of it is wanting to know how to do stuff. I don't like feeling like I always have to rely on other people to do stuff. I want to know how to do things. And that's great for like building and, you know, DIYing projects, stuff like that. But when it comes to the practical things of life, these are things that our kids really need to know. So uh, this is a great way to make homeschooling more fun. Also make life a little easier on you and simplify things, right? Like we're going to do cooking today. So maybe it's the day that you really need to do a bunch of freezer meals so that you don't have to stress about dinner for the next week. And so you're going to bring the kids along for the cooking, help them learn some math skills, some basic measuring, all that kind of stuff. There's chemistry involved. There are so many things that you can just casually chat about. And by doing, it will spark new questions. So you might think, well, I just don't know what I'm going to teach them in this. It'll come. Don't worry. And laundry, I mean, sewing, baking, all of those are life skills. Changing the oil in the car. I mean, taxes. I could go on and on. Life skills, so very important and something that often gets overlooked even within homeschooling curriculum. So don't overlook that. It's very valuable for your kids. Another way to add that fun is to incorporate documentaries, movies into your homeschool. I am a big, big, big fan of documentaries. So whether we are studying, I don't know, the Titanic or Stoicism or, you know, just even some grammar concept, there are video lessons to be found for free on YouTube. There are also lots of great paid documentary and like sort of mini course sites, but I highly recommend incorporating this. It's going to give you a break and you would be shocked at what your children will learn and retain and it's all part of helping to helping them to discover what is interesting to them. They don't know what they don't know. So watching documentaries on a variety of topics, learning about all kinds of things even from a young age, it's not because there's a test on this and they have to know it. It's Watching them from a distance, letting them explore topics and ideas, you never know what your child is going to be like so very interested in. Maybe be their thing, the thing that they just love and want to learn more about. It's a fascinating way to learn a little about a lot. And lastly, celebrate. Celebrate when and where you can. This does not have to be like over the top crazy parties and, you know, spending a bunch of money or a bunch of time. It's just the idea that like, hey guys, look at this. We finished this or we got through this. We finished this unit. We finished this. Let's celebrate. And that celebration might mean like just a fresh batch of cookies or hopping in the car and going and getting a slushy or an icy or an ice cream or something like that. It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be over the top. It's just little celebrations. And if you were in public school, then you probably remember that when you got those little treats and rewards, kind of a big deal. Like it turned around your day if you were having a bad day. It was something to look forward to. I think sometimes in homeschooling, we forget how those little things can have such a big impact because we're just kind of living our life often, right? Like we homeschool because we want school to mesh with life. And that is great. But remembering that kids don't have the same internal drive 
to learn everything that you want them to learn or that they are expected to learn based on state standards or whatever. If kids were just left to learn whatever they wanted as they wanted, that'd be a different story. But oftentimes they do have to learn things and take tests and study about topics that they have absolutely no interest in whatsoever. So finding ways to celebrate that victory of like, hey, you did the hard thing or the unfun thing in their mind or, you know, just celebrating those little wins, I think is special and meaningful uh, in a way that maybe they can't quite articulate at seven, eight, nine, ten. But I bet you when they are older and they look back, they'll be like, man, that was so awesome. I remember how whenever we would finish a unit, my mom would make us cookies and it was just so fun like that will be something that sticks with them and that they remember hopefully you found these tips helpful and some ideas in this video that you can incorporate into your school year this year to make it more fun and engaging and exciting and and finding new ways to make the information something that your child can actually retain these are just some of the ways that i have found to make this information something that my kids can retain to find new ways to keep them engaged in what we are doing And truth be told, to keep me engaged too. Because, well, after 10 years of homeschooling, sometimes I get bored with stuff. And I'm like, I don't want to talk about this again for the 10th time. Be sure to check out the Night Zookeeper down below. Try that free trial. You get it free for seven days. And if you love it as much as I really think that you will, then you can get the annual membership for 50% off. That's it for me today, y'all. I will see you guys again very soon. 